G'day mate, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, JD. So, um, in the last episode, we got our hatch hatchery set up and we made it a little bit more advanced. So, we're bringing hatches into here. If we have an overflow, we're taking them out of here and dumping them up into this critter drop-off. We're now making sure that our hatch, our hatchling eggs get go through an incubator. They are being incubated. We are wasting a fair bit of power on that, which we can look at in the next couple of episodes. And any hatchlings are being brought over here where they can run through this door. Once they've run through this door, this door will shut, this door will open, and our hatchling will fall into our hatchery, just giving our dupes a little bit less running around they have to do. Um, this episode, we're actually going to deal with some of these error messages, well, not error messages, but messages we have popping up so we've had this unrefrigerated food for quite some time but now that we're producing meat which is a much higher quality food um, and now we've actually got fried we've, we've got mushrooms as well which we can now turn into fried mushrooms so we want to set that to forever as well because again same story we go from 2400 of mush uh, 2400 calories of mushroom into 4800 calories of um fried mush well 20 2400 into 2800 and the quality of the food actually goes up by plus one if we click on mushroom here we go quality terrible so we get a slight calorie bonus at the same time we get a quality a slight, slight calorie bonus and at the same time we get a quality bonus so we want to make sure that all mushrooms can be turned into fried mushrooms at the same time in the consumable tabs we want to definitely make sure mushrooms are turned off. We don't want any dupes eating mushrooms, just the same as we didn't want any dupes eating meal lice. We really want to turn it into lice loaf or in a pickled meal, purely because we were we had stuff going rotten. Now, this time around, we're actually going to go into the food tab. We're going to look at the refrigerator, and down here in our carbon dioxide area. So this area is. The bottom level is, or the bottom two levels are filled with carbon dioxide. There's another wrangle. Go away. The bottom two levels are filled with carbon dioxide, and slowly over time, the top level will also fill with carbon dioxide. Um, one thing I might actually do is deconstruct that one tile, put in an airflow tile, just so carbon dioxide can go out both sides. Because what we're actually relying on is the dupes come in here and breathe out or carbon dioxide to naturally fall into this area and fill up this area with carbon dioxide. Once it's full, carbon dioxide is the heaviest gas so it will always go to, to the bottom. Um, but what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go in food, we're gonna go refrigerator, and we're gonna put some fridges down here. Now the main reason I choose a fridge over the earlier ration box is a ration box stores 150 kilos and it is a two by two object okay um because that little light on the top just sticks over those squares it actually means it's a two by two object the refrigerator is a one by two object and holds a hundred kilos worth of food by simple virtue of the fact that i can put in two of these bins in the same two by two tile i can actually store 200 kilos worth of food compared to 100. Now, I'm gonna up the priority on this one, have it store everything. We're gonna copy the settings to its two friends, and I'm actually gonna drop the priorities on these what by one each respectively, because I wanna force the food into this container. Once this container's full, then they can put it in the second and the third. It's just shortening the dupe's travel time by ever so little amount. And one of them just dropped food. Yep. Your grubs. So what I'm doing is I'm lowering the priority on this um, chest. And increasing the priority on this chest. It should mean that when one of them doesn't want to be lazy. They're all going to go eat. It's eating time obviously. And bedtime obviously. Excellent. One time I actually need dupes to physically do something. They're off for snacks and naps and bathroom breaks and falling asleep right outside the bathroom. Get up, move around. Ah, we've got our first one. Here we go. 
So you can see the dupes are physically removing stuff from this box, bring it in here and putting it in this box. Now we've got fried mushroom. Fried mushroom is a pretty good example. Currently it has pollution exposure. So I don't know why it has pollution exposure. Aha. There's a tiny bit of polluted oxygen up here that's giving us hassles. Um, but there we go. So currently, because it's mainly in an oxygen environment, not all the time, but most of the time, we're actually, it's, it's decaying, going stale at a rate of 13% per cycle. Anything I put down here, and... We'll look at meat. Meat seems like a good example. Is now in a sterile environment. So it no longer goes stale. It will sit there forever in our carbon dioxide environment and never go stale. So that means we're no longer going to have food rotting on us, which is very, very important. Um, now you can intentionally put cooking ingredients up here. So you could choose to put your raw egg here so it gets cooked in a hurry. Um, same with pinch of pepper nut, which goes into our barbecue. Um, I don't think pinch of pepper nut, because it's considered a spice, I don't think it goes bad. Um, I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. But now we've settled our problem with things going stale, I can actually stop making pickled meals, and I can go back to lice loaf. Um, because lice loaf definitely had the increase in, in calories, and on top of that, it was a quality zero meal rather than quality of minus one. So again, a little bit more quality. The other thing we've got is we've got a large commutes error, or error, warning, which means dupes are spending a long time traveling from A to B around the base. A way we can fix this, and it's in our research, we haven't actually got it yet, is we can research refined objects. So we can have a fire pole, and temp shift plates. Now the temp shift plates, we're, we're not going to use at this point. They are basically a giant heat sink to move temperature from the foreground to the background or vice versa. But the fire pole, pole does exactly as you would expect. It lets duplicates very, very quickly and easily slide up and down the base. Now, again, as I said before, you don't want to use copper. You'd much prefer to use gold amalgam because it's a much more renewable resource. And as you dig through slime biomes that you've probably had to do, and we haven't had to do in this series because of I'm, I'm basically generating resources when I use um, the creative mode, um, we can start putting in some of these fireballs. And straight away you'll see as they start jumping on it, they can get down the base a lot faster. Going up is very, very bad. Obviously, you don't want anybody to have to slide up a fire pole. Um, but down is perfectly acceptable. And it's why any... I, I, I tried to leave these gaps either side. It hasn't worked out perfectly. Um, there have been some issues with me not leaving enough space. Um, up here is a prime example. Uh, I'm hoping that this will be self-contained so I won't need the space. In saying that, my coal generator is sort of in the way. So at some stage later on, I might have to move things around. Um, I could put the coal generator and the battery in my hatchery without any hassle, really, as long as I make sure that this drop path is, is kept clear. Um, it's something we can look at doing later on. What are we doing? We're, we're, we're lullabying that egg now um, to make the eggs hatch even faster, faster. So. Um, they were the two big things I want to actually cover this. Oh, and I also want to make an apology. I used insulated tiles earlier. Um, turns out we didn't actually have the research. So the research for those is here, under temperature modulation. Um, it gives you two useless things, and that they are, they are dead set useless. It gives you the hydro fan and the space heater. Um, we'll go over them really, really quickly but they are probably the worst things you'll ever use. So the space heater will heat an area up. Um, it produces an insane amount of heat, uh, has a decor bonus for some reason, and doesn't produce, it uh, doesn't use much power. I mean, it sort of breaks many laws of physics. We're gonna ignore that, it, it, it's a heater. Um, 
And the hydro fan is in theory removes duplicate, duplicate thermal units worth of heat. And it works about as effective as you sit, sitting there fanning yourself. It's fine during the moment when it's you're fanning yourself, but as soon as you stop fanning yourself, you get hot again instantly. It is absolutely pointless, and it requires a duplicate to stand there to run the fan continuously. It doesn't use power. It just... It's absolute useless. Until Clay actually look at doing some sort of modification to it, we can just absolutely ignore it. Um, template shift fit, temp shift plate is, um, as I said, it's it's a giant heat sink, which will let you move temperature either from the foreground to the background or vice versa. Um, we have the insulated tiles, which I sort of covered earlier by mistake, and just lets you, as it insulate between one area and the next. If we look at these, the the the, the heat, the temperature overlay, you can see inside's fairly cool. Um, we need these mushrooms to stay between. 5 and 35 we're definitely in that zone and whereas outside is it's quite warm it's not too hot mostly um but it's still quite warm uh and yeah you can see our, our co2 is building up our oxygen is going out this corner so eventually after i clear out all the oxygen we, we can swap that tile over um to a uh back to an insulated tile um now we have finished pumping out this water so I want to mop that up um, also want to go to the power overlay and deconstruct anything we don't need uh, water overlay same thing deconstruct anything we don't need uh, physically deconstruct the pump um, just just to keep the area as clean as possible there's always going to be things that are going to get in your way um, and, and anytime you can deconstruct something that's old and, and, and it's done with, I recommend you do so. Um, so yeah, that's really about it. Um, one thing I might actually do is we might explore this security door. Because these are the sort of things you're going to come across. And as you can see, the duplicates can't actually get in this area. Because it's all blacked out like this, the only way is through this security door. Um, by submitting a bioscan, which is just basically having a dupe walk up and open the door, and then we can start having a look inside and all this area will, will unreveal or, or reveal at once. Um, now, when we originally came down here, I actually put down a couple of deodorizers because I knew at some stage we were going to dig this out, which means this is full of germs, uh, impluted oxygen, and as you can see, they're sort of at the max threshold for, for the amount of gas that they're in. Um, we do have occasionally germs around the base. Um, not many. We're, 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 we're really keeping them under control by converting any polluted oxygen with or without germs across to oxygen. Any... Here we go. We've got a bit of oxygen here. Any... Don't say overpopulated. Change to... Oh. That one. No, it's not going to tell me. So anytime we have oxygen, actually carbon dioxide might tell me. Mm, no, not really. Um, anytime we have oxygen and, and, and slime lung germs in oxygen, they will die off. I wouldn't say super fast, but they will die off fairly quickly. So what I'm actually going to do is we're going to punch open this and I'm going to do it very, very quickly so we can show off what happened so this gas can now escape and as you can see we've already got some oxygen right there which has slime lung in it and as you can say half cycle of half life of two cycles which means in two cycles time we're going to go from uh one well and in hundred germs down to 900 germs two cycles after that we'll go down to 450 so on and so forth germs you need to keep an eye on we do have the med bay should we need it um, actually, we had somebody have a fight with Hatch. Did I send them off to get healed? I must off. Um, either or they just healed naturally. Because they do have some sort of natural healing. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to pop this open. Our two deodorizers will deal with any polluted oxygen that flows out, hopefully. As long as they're kept with sand. 
Uh, and in the meantime, our duplicates can, can climb in here and submit their bioscan to this door and hopefully find out exactly what's in there. So kindness is rolling down now. He, she, it is going to open the door. And in here we've got, well, we've got a couple of things. We've got a locker. We've got a couple of mushrooms, which I actually want to grab as fast as possible. Um, because we have a mushroom farm over here that's obviously missing the actual mushrooms to farm. Um, and we have a couple of mushrooms here sitting on the ground. Uh, straight away, these are now in an oxygen environment because the blood oxide, well, the carbon dioxide fell out of the room. So they're probably going to stop growing, which is unfortunate because they're almost ready. And we have a couple of storage lockers which we can rummage through. At the same time, I really recommend if you're low on materials, bring up the deconstruction planner when you get to these rooms, or, or the, 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 the overlays, and look for wires. Look for wires that are doing nothing. Um, same with these tiles these tiles can all be deconstructed the light fixture can't and the lockers can't they're fixed part of the map they can't be removed they can't be anything um they're basically stuck there i don't think that's going to get to yes yeah, 30 cycles and it's 91 percent the other one's even worse 74 percent. so we're going to dig up you and we might as well dig up you as well. Okay, so when we run through the lockers, we found a couple of things. We found some snazzy suits. So the snazzy suits have two things about them. They give a, a, a insulation modifier. So one of these silly overlays. Thermal tolerance something, something, something. So in this area, it's actually slightly too warm for our duplicates. Um, in fact, the whole base is a little bit of slightly too warm currently. We do need to look at some sort of active air conditioning fairly soon. But then if you come look at look at our water masses um, or any cold biomes that we may or may not have discovered. Nope, looks like we haven't discovered any yet or maybe down here. Uh, nope. Um, the snazzy suit will definitely help. But on top of that, it has a decor value of 30. So if we go back to the decor overlay, we can see that um, Learning's outfit gives a minus five decor. So we're gonna put one of those on Learning, one of those on Cooking, and one of those on Digging. And hopefully he comes and puts it on. Yay, snazzy suit, okay. Uh, decor overlay and now as you can see we have a plus 30 decor around learning um, so again little bonus it all adds up over time uh, and the other thing we want to get access to is this machine in here so this is a neural vacillator um, Mass, massive synthetic brain suspended in saline solution. There is a chair attached to the vice with room for one person. It probably won't give us any more de details than that. But you can assign somebody to it. So I'm going to hit priority nine because I want this done now. And I'm going to send learning over here. Because, oops, sorry about that. It's an alarm going off to remind me I need to do things. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very good Factorio player. Um, so we're going to send learning over here who should be able to yeah he can walk all the way over here and he's going to sit in the hot seat uh, we're going to do a print screen real quick and eventually we've got to let him out otherwise he'll pee his pants or suffer um, but his vacillation is complete has completed the new vacillation process and is ready to be released. So we're going to complete it. Let learning out. And learning has acquired the sunny disposition trait. Uh, has an unwavy positive outlook in line. Stress change of minus 20% per cycle. So he now walks funny. With a skip and a jump and a, and a, and a hop and, a, and a everything else. On top of that, he cannot be upset. Now... If you happen to get a duplicate like this, you can head over to your jobs tab 
And there is a very, very good chance, even if their morale requirements aren't met. So their current learning's current morale is 13. He needs 12 for this tier. There is a chance you can promote them already because of that minus 20% of stress. Any stress that they will receive from having too low a morale is probably going to be negated by that sunny dis disposition trait. Um, so yeah, that's done, that's done. Um, we are having somewhat of a heating problem around different parts of the base. You know, a little bit down here because we've got a, a generator up here because our electrolyzer actually puts out very, very, very hot oxygen. Um, very hot's probably a bit of a stretch, but it's definitely hotter than anything else around the area. Um, it's actually cooled down by the time it's flowed from there to there. On top of that, our bathrooms are putting out some heat, and obviously so is our electric girl. So all these things are putting out a little bit of heat, and over time they will really, really add up. Uh, no, we picked up that mushroom. Oh, 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 and germs. So because this tile, and probably the one beside it, is touching this slime, it will constantly get infected with germs. I normally say, just come down here and just cancel the disinfect. It's already in a germy biome. You don't want duplicates running down here to spray something with disinfectant, breathing in this 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 lovely germy atmosphere. Um, just turn things off for disinfect wherever you can. Uh, okay. With that, I think we're just about done. Um, I need to sweep up these water bottles, or they don't get dealt with. Um, just because of how we've set up this to only handle sweep only items. Um, so yeah, I think we're done with this episode. In the next episode, I want to actually look at some, some way to try and deal with this heat. Like we haven't found a cold biome yet because we haven't gone exploring for one. Um, in your case, you might have started right beside a cold biome. You might have stumbled across one as whilst you've been exploring. Um, in our case, we haven't because we're still very, very centralized. Um, but yeah, so in the next episode, really want to look at some sort of active air conditioning for the base, um, along with possibly, um, possibly looking at a bit more advanced um, farming techniques and a few other things. So. We'll see what happens in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying the series. And I'll see you in the next one. Alright, bye.